Ta-da! Somebody really needs to take away my eBay account. Okay, so welcome to Random Bits. Uh, this is basically just going to be little short videos that kind of show off random things that I've collected uh, over the years. And, you know, maybe there's not enough there to do a proper documentary style video, or I have questions or stuff like that. Uh, this will be where I do it. Okay, so how did this happen? Well, same way it always does. I was cruising eBay one day and yeah, I came across it. And initially I didn't pay much attention to it because it looked like just a random piece of scientific gear, albeit one with a keyboard and a cassette recorder and what looked like a printer. And I looked at the name Synex Labs Interrogator. Ooh, <laughs> sounds dark. And I did a little bit of Googling, could not find anything about Synex Labs except for a couple of really obscure references and nothing about this machine at all. So I kind of just passed on it for a bit, but it kept coming back up in my eBay feed as I was looking around in other vintage computing gear. And one day I just kind of looked really closely at the keyboard and I went, huh, that keyboard looks familiar. I, I know I've seen it somewhere. So I looked at one of the close-up photos and I went, hmm, I think I have seen this keyboard somewhere. It doesn't have the markings that I'm expecting, but that, yeah, I've seen it. And then I looked up at the printer above it and I went, yeah, that printer looks familiar too. I, I distinctly remember seeing that label somewhere. So I started looking at the other pictures and I'm trying to divine what exactly this thing is. And I see a picture of the printout uh, that has been left behind. And the one word that I can make out there is range. And I'm like, range, so what is this thing doing? And, you know, I'm looking at the uh, kind of industrial build to it, the gray color, and I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's military. <laughs> I'm getting all excited. I'm like, maybe this is like a field programmable missile launch controller or something, right? <laughs> guidance! Source programmable guidance! Yeah, man, I could certainly use one of those some days. Hello, Bob. Yes, yeah, uh, your neighbor next door, Brad. Yeah, uh, listen, I, I don't want to be that guy, but uh, it's getting to be 10.30 at night and I gotta work tomorrow morning. Is there any chance you could just turn your music down just a little bit? What's that? Go f*** myself? Okay. Okay, let's see, what's the range? 8.75. Uh, it's probably not that. And as I'm thinking it over, I finally clue in. I think, wait a minute, that might be a Rockwell AM65 in disguise. Uh, if you don't know the Rockwell AM65, it's basically a single board computer based on the 6502. And it's kind of the Cadillac of single board computers too, because it has literally everything. Uh, it has a keyboard, it has a uh, alphanumeric LED display, has a printer, can interface with a cassette, like it's just, one of those cool little machines uh, that can do a little bit of everything. And I don't have one, I've always wanted one. In fact, I consider the M65 to be part of the uh, starter pack for vintage computer collecting, uh, but I just objected to the price. They were always around three to $500 and they seem to keep coming up on eBay regularly. So I was getting the impression they weren't very rare, but uh, yeah, this was not going for a lot of money. It was uh, barely at 50 bucks when I was looking at it. And I thought, you know, what if this is an AIM-65 in disguise? You know, what if somebody customized an AIM-65 to do some kind of scientific or research kind of things? And, you know, maybe there's an AIM-65 in there. I mean, yeah, the printer's in the wrong place. The printer's usually over on the left, but the printer can be unbolted and moved. So that could explain that. Uh, the keyboard obviously can be mounted anywhere. So, and the case looks pretty big. So, you know, I think they could potentially tuck an AIM-65 in there somewhere. And then they have a nice little portable computer that they can use for whatever they're analyzing. The only thing that had me kind of doubting that a little bit was the lack of the alphanumeric display. I couldn't find it anywhere in the photos. Uh, initially, I thought it was right below the tape deck, but that appears to be the uh, tape control button. So it's not that. 
And I thought, okay, well, that'd be kind of weird to have a portable computer that has no screen, but who knows, maybe there's some reason they opted not to do that and it just prints off on the paper tape or some other thing. Anyway, I put in a low ball bid and I figured, you know, if I win it, great, and if I don't, I don't. And of course I did. <laughs> so here it is. And uh, yeah, it's pretty glorious. It's a uh, pretty stout metal. And if we open it up, uh, and we can see that my hunch was right, because that says AIM-65 right there. So this is definitely an AIM-65 keyboard. There's no doubt about that. And the printer most likely is an AIM-65 printer as well. I've seen the uh, warning use approved paper only label before, so 100% sure that that's what that is. The tape deck, I mean, that could have come from anywhere, uh, but it just looks like a standard tape player to me. And uh, you've got a data button and you've got a printout button. And I'm not really sure how any of that works, but unfortunately there is no AIM-65 computer. Uh, I actually pulled this out and looked inside and it's basically just metal rods that are supporting all the equipment here. Uh, basically the inside of the case is hollow. So that was a little bit of a bummer. And I suppose in retrospect, it probably wouldn't have made sense anyway, because number one, the display is missing. And number two, this case is not as big as it appears in pictures. It's, uh, you know, it's only about that tall. And I think the AIM-65 board itself is quite a bit deeper than that. It would probably be up to here. So yeah, that's a bummer, but you know, it's still kind of a cool thing to look at. And yeah, another thing that probably should have been a red flag was I didn't see any kind of a power supply. I didn't see a way to, to plug in power. Um, there is this connector on the side here and it looks like it's weatherproofed and you unscrew it and then you've got this. And then basically you've got this massive wires arranged into a cable and it's actually keyed on one end so you can only put it in one way. And basically you kind of plug it in like this into the side and then you screw it in. And then the other end would go to basically whatever it was that uh, this thing connected to. So basically what they've done is all of the wiring, all of the keyboard wiring, all the cassette deck wiring, all the printer wiring comes out into these wires here. And so whatever this plugged into obviously receives all those signals. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, there wasn't an AIM-65 involved somewhere. There could well have been. One thing I find interesting looking at the printout here, um, it's kind of hard to read, but it says basically something performance analyzer, something printout. And uh, you can see, talks about samples, uh, 825,875 samples. And I believe that because this just goes on forever. And it's basically talking about range, LES, KW, which could be kilowatts. And I kind of think based on this and based on this tape here, which says power versus wind, I think, RSD, I think that this may have been some sort of a monitoring system for maybe some sort of power generator is my guess maybe a wind power generator uh, back in 1980 looks like when this tape was made so thinking about it that way that might kind of make sense you might ruggedize this part and basically carry it around to different stations which are basically collecting data as they operate and then you plug this thing in and you basically sign in and print off the data and take the data and leave um, you wouldn't probably want to leave the terminal there in case it's a remote site and you know, maybe somebody breaks in and messes with it. And I would guess that basically at your power station or wherever these things were plugging in, there you would have your screen and basically you'd call up your data and tell the thing to print off. Or maybe there's no screen at all and it just basically plugs in and you hit a key sequence that you know already and it just basically pumps out the data. So you bring the keyboard and printer end with you and you just go to multiple sites and collect your data and move on. That would be my best guess as to what it is. And I mean, maybe it's an AIM-65 computer that would be installed in these stations. Um, that certainly wouldn't be unprecedented. I have definitely seen Rockwell AIM-65 computers uh, pressed into service for a variety of things because they were such a, a versatile, useful little computer. Um, I've seen them used in industrial applications. Um, so using them in a scientific application like this uh, probably would make some sense. And it came with a few tapes. 
Um, well, actually, it only came with two. There was an empty case. But yeah, we've got this one, and then we've got another one here. And unfortunately, I can't really read what it says on the label because it's kind of faded off. But what I'll probably do is dump these into a, like a wave file and then maybe post it in the description once I've got it. And if you're out there and you've got an AIM-65 computer and you want to check them out and see if there's an actual program there or if it's just raw data, uh, you know, I'd love to uh, have you check that out and let me know in the comments if uh, you find anything interesting. So that being said, that raises the question of what to do with this. Uh, because obviously whatever this was connected to is probably long gone. So yeah, I'm probably not going to see that come up on eBay. Uh, it's just such a cool design. I, I really kind of like the idea of this suitcase new computer. Um, minus the computer, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I, I wonder maybe if I could customize this somehow. You know, maybe put a little LCD screen in there. Uh, maybe put a real M65 in if I can find a way to turn it to fit in this case or put a Raspberry Pi in there that's emulating an AM65 that'd be another way to do it yeah I don't know the possibilities are kind of kind of limitless or I could leave it alone as an example of what it is but you know I think it's kind of sad that you can't uh, actually use it for anything and uh, I'd love to see it work I'd love to know what's on these tapes and uh, what this thing was doing because this is uh, you know wind power is very topical in 2020 this is 40 years ago, so it'd be really interesting to know kind of what they were doing with this. So yeah, that concludes this Random Bits video. And uh, yeah, if you have any thoughts on what this is or what it should be, drop a line in the comments. Love to hear from you. And yeah, we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.